With Christmas, I find myself in the biggest and most notorious prison of Southeast Asia, the Tihar Jail in New Delhi. Amidst many others, I had to press myself against the prison bars to make myself heard. I visited a German girl who was there. She was sentenced for eight years in prison for the small possession of soft drugs. Although I did not know her beforehand, she explained, she explained to me that she was very happy that I was there to visit her. It made her feel human again. This visit also made a huge impression on me. In fact, it influenced my career. Before I start my talk, I'd like to ask you one thing. What are the first words which come up in your mind when you think of prisoners? I bet you think they are Dangerous people. They are criminals. People you should get rid of. Justice is done. Put them far away in order to protect society. I can fully understand that. Especially when you look at movies and when you look at the high walls which are built around prisoners. It is difficult to know to know who's inside and what happens inside. As inspector of prisons and as a researcher, I have the opportunity to visit prisons all the time and to see what's happening actually inside. And I discovered that reality is different. Reality is more, is more complex, perhaps, but it's also more hopeful. Here are a few pictures. If you look at these pictures, we should take in consideration that half of the prison population in the world consists of people who have not yet been sentenced, who haven't seen a judge, but also people who are not violent or dangerous at all, as you maybe saw in the pictures. You also have to take into consideration that they have families, families they have to take care of. But even more importantly, we also have to realize that these people come back to our societies. They will return. And if we keep our eyes shut for them while they are in detention, and, we, and, when, and when we keep on neglecting them as a part of society, then we continue to have a problem once they are released from prison. So today, I'd like to talk to you about a special group of prisoners foreign national prisoners. These are prisoners who are, det who are detained outside of their own country. And if you look at the total number of prisoners worldwide, there are over 10 million people detained worldwide. Around half a million are detained in a country of which they, they do not belong. And if you look at, uh, for example, the Middle East, we spoke earlier today about the Middle East. If you look at the prison populations over there, you see that half of the prison popula population there consists of foreigners. And if, we, if you look at the European Union, countries in the EU, that one in every six prisoner is a foreigner. So maybe we have to start thinking about that. We should take this group into consideration, not only because the high number and the fact that the numbers are likely to rise due to globalization, but also because they face special difficulties and they have special needs. And if you look at the difficulties, I think, well, we all can come up with, uh, with things which might bother them. Like, for example, they don't speak the language. So therefore, they sometimes are not aware of the rules or their rights. 
um, it's difficult for them to interact with others, with the prison staff, but also with, uh, with fellow prisoners. And very often as a result of that, they feel lonely. But they feel even more lonely because they're far away from their families. And in some countries, uh, the prison authorities cannot, for example, afford to pay, um, to pay for food, to provide food to prisoners. And they have to rely on their families, the p prisoners' families, to bring in food. Well, for foreigners, that's not the case. It's uh, simply impossible. And also the foreign status makes that sometimes they cannot participate in, for example, education or work. And especially if you look at uh, reintegration programs, they say, well, you're not coming back to our society, so why should we bother? Why should we um, give you the opportunity to get prepared for release? So once these people come back to their own companies, nothing, uh, their own countries, nothing is there. They, they have to start up to build a new life. And that's very difficult. And getting into trouble is even, well, it's quite, quite, uh, it's not that difficult then if you're in such a position. So this is why we should tackle this problem. And um, as we all know, societies are looking for, uh, for ways to um, prevent recidivism which means we try to find interventions which help for prisoners to not reoffend again. And it's very difficult. If you look at the numbers, you see that a large majority of prisoners, once they are released, they fall back into crime. And uh, people, but also, or even more, politicians are asking, calling for higher sentences. But we know from academic studies that that does not work. It makes things even worse. And... Um, so we have to look at alternatives. And I have found something which I'd like to share with you today. And that's the case of Dutch nationals who are detained abroad. And uh, being Dutch, um, but not being very proud of the, about the number, we have many Dutch nationals who are detained abroad. Many are there because they smuggle drugs, uh, but also for other offenses. So we have 2,500 Dutch nationals who are at this moment detained in nearly 100 countries in the world. And, well, like I said, I'm not proud of this uh, Dutch export product, but we, uh, we have to face it, it's there. But um, I, I'm also triggered by the attention they receive from the Netherlands, and I think it's something also we can be proud of. Um, if you look at them, they are detained, like I said, everywhere in, in very various places around the world. But they are visited twice per year by consular staff. So people from the Dutch embassy, they go there twice a year to see them. But there are, al there are also volunteers, Dutch nationals who live abroad and who visit them on a regular basis, like every six weeks. And there's also an organization in the Netherlands, and the religious organizations called Epaphras, and they work with chaplains, religious people who work here, professionals who are trained, and who go abroad and visit Dutch nationals. This is really unique in the world. I don't know, well, I, I, there's no other country that uh, does this. And um, if you look at the numbers, um, on, on an average basis, more than 14,000 visits are being carried out, which is on average five visits per prisoner. But, okay, this is maybe nice, but what's the effect of it? And uh, to find an answer to this, I'd like, you to, um, I'd like to take you to Argentina. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was there. I accompanied uh, a Dutch volunteer, um, and we went together to a female prison, uh, a Cesar prison close to the airport. And um, the first lady we met was an elderly Dutch lady, and uh, she was seriously ill. And she was in need of medicines, which were not available in prison. And this volunteer took these medicines with her. Then we also uh, met uh, a Dutch girl who was arrested um, um, a couple of days before that. And um, she had not had the opportunity to inform her family that she was detained. So this lady arranged for her to call her family, but also to look at, okay, what, what things do you have to arrange in Holland? And she had to freeze her debts. She had to inform her landlord that she was not coming back in the coming uh, months or years. Um, so really things that would prevent also problems from when she com would come back to, to Holland. And the third person was uh, also a girl 
um, caught with drugs, and um, she had to sleep on the floor. There were no mattresses. And one call from this volunteer to the director made that she had a, had a mattress. So this is nice, but um, what I also sa saw when I interviewed prisoners, when I asked them, okay, what do you think about these visits? And they were really moved by it. And uh, when I told them these are done by volunteers, they were like overwhelmed. They, 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 they have a very low, in general, low self-esteem. They uh, have the feeling that they are, they are rejected by society. They feel very bad also about what they have done. Um, and they are very grateful that there's somebody who's really paying an interest in them and, and is motivated to come to them and, and believes in them. And, and I think that's, that's priceless. And, um, and, and I think it, it proves that, that they are still human and, and th that they have responsibilities. And so they feel like, okay, I'm, I'm still there. I'm part of society. And um, I think this also creates a, a fruitful ground for a successful return. And um, well, today also I'd like to, to, um, to uh, express my gratitude to all those volunteers who visit nationals who are detained abroad, because I think they are really brave. They put aside their maybe well, negative ideas about prisoners, and they, and they went and they, they, they saw these people and, and make them feel they are part of society. And, and, and we all know, we all make mistakes. And if we like to live in a safe world, we have to do it together. And uh, let's not forget, ending up in prison c can happen to any one of us. To any one of us. And, and especially when you're abroad, when you don't know the, the language and you don't know the rules, you can, well, you can uh, end up in prison. And um, I don't know if, if anyone signed this form. Did anyone sign this form? I think you, you have a list of people who did. You might think, thank you. This is a recusation list in Hindi. Uh, or you might even think this is the, 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 the Indian curry you ordered for after this break. Uh, but in fact, it's a confession that you are um, involved in a traffic uh, accident and that you committed a crime. So uh, see you in prison. Thank you. <laughs>